If you're new to the content creation industry, whether it be photography, videography, or editing, today we're gonna to talk about the six people you really need to avoid when coming into this industry. And beware, you could be one of the six. Stay tuned. What's going on guys, my name is Ty Turner and if this is your first time on this channel, this channel was designed for people like yourself that want to turn their passion into profit. Today I wanna to talk about the six people you really need to stay away from if you're new to this industry. And for those who've been in the industry for a while, you still want to avoid regular contact with these type of people. They will bring you down and bring your business down as well. Let's start with number one. Number one is Mr. Arrogant Guy. He's usually really arrogant because of gear he owned or something he did a while back or one picture or job he's done. And because of that, you can't tell him nothing. It's almost like he stopped growing the instant he landed one big client or bought one big camera. Please be mindful that this guy is not good for your everyday psyche because the goal is to learn and continue to grow with the business, with the company, with the industry. Photography today is not what it was just three years ago. So you have to stay nimble and you don't want to be around people who are stuck in their ways. This is not the industry to be stuck in your ways. This industry is about evolution. So guys who are stuck in their ways and arrogant based off how things used to be are the guys you really need to avoid when entering this industry. Guy number two is the non-tech guy. It's the photographer that don't really deal with computers and stuff. They only deal with just photography. They don't wanna learn about software and different things you can do. They don't wanna learn about a lot of the features on their camera. They're just simply there for just great raw image quality out of the camera. You need to embrace the idea of the fact that photo and video is now a IT industry. It's now a part of the computer society. It's now a part of technology. It's not a separate standalone thing as it was probably 20 years ago. You would meet a lot of photographers that I, I know or bump into that will not touch Lightroom, that will not touch Photoshop, that will not touch other applications to help them get the most out of their content. They are like, nope, I wanna just take the picture and just upload it, and things just don't work like that. Camera companies are working to give you more access, like raw files, so they can do less baked in looks within the camera. They wanna give you the opportunity to create what you wanna create. So people who are not technology guys, they don't wanna look into new features and work with things. Now, again, there's times where I can be a bit that way, right? I don't like autofocus. I do like it for certain cases, I just like to run manual focus simply because I like to control what the camera does. There are cases where I love to do autofocus. If I'm doing something fast paced, if I'm following a bird or something like that, yes, autofocus is perfect. However, I like to control the focus. I like to know where I'm moving things to. If we're doing an interview, there's plenty of times where I'll draw a circle or lock it on a person, especially if they're rocking back and forth and it comes in handy. So be mindful of the guy who's just not willing to touch tech. He's not willing to learn about the features in his camera. Those are the guys that I like to buy cameras from on Craigslist because they're upgrading and they really don't understand what they have. They're selling it at a low price because they don't understand what they have. A great example is people who pretty much upgrade from like T5Is to T6Is. There's absolutely no reason to upgrade every year for a camera that's within the same class. That's not the guy you wanna be. Guy number three is brand boy. Brand boy don't care about who's doing what. If it's not his favorite brand, it's not better, period. I know guys that are die hard Nikon guys, die hard Canon guys, die hard Sony guys. Stay flexible with the brands you love. Don't be loyal to something you're giving money to. It doesn't make no sense. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have favorites. I'm not saying don't have favorites. However, 
Don't be so closed minded that you don't go look and see what other companies are doing as if other companies can't catch up. We've seen in every other industry that powerhouses tend to shift. You know, Chevy and Ford were the big front runners for a long time and here comes Honda and Hyundai and Kia, companies people wouldn't bat an eye at 20 years ago. They're now creating serious competition, if not products that are better than, you know, the powerhouses of the time. So don't be stuck on brands. Venture out, buy a Tamron lens, buy a Sigma lens, buy a lens from a company you never heard of. Give it a shot. Canon lenses may be better, but they may not be two, three times the price better. And you have to realize that, hey, if someone hadn't set me down and put these two next to each other and pointed out every little single detail in a split image side by side, would I really care? And the answer is no, I wouldn't. So don't be so stuck, stuck with a brand just because the last model worked or somebody you knew had one forever. I have a studio full of Black Magics, Canon, Sony's. I use everything and I use each tool based on the job because some things work better for certain jobs and it's great to have access to it all instead of being stuck to just one brand. Guy number four is the cheap guy. It's the guy who don't want to make investments in himself or his gear to be successful. You will not be successful if you're not making investments. He want others to make investments in him, but he's not willing to make investments in him to be better. I see a lot of people talking about they want to be wedding photographers. They have not invested in any type of course for business, for photography. They're shooting with stock lenses, and they've been doing that for the last three or four years. I don't understand how you can be in business as a photographer or a videographer and not invest in yourself and your gear. I see a lot of people year three in this thing. They've got customers, they got clients walking around in a pair of Jordans or some type of flashy belt or clothes, but they're shooting on a stock 55 to what 105 F 5.6 lens, wondering why their images can't compete with somebody else. They're blaming it on other things like luck or his camera body is better. When the truth is they never invested in themselves. They haven't invested in themselves or their gear to improve. They haven't invested on the business side to improve. They haven't contacted mentors to improve. They think if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'll get better. When the truth is, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. You have to make the investment and stop expecting others to continue to invest in you when you won't invest in yourself. If you go into a restaurant that looks like trash, they may get you once, but you're not gonna keep going there if they're comfortable having that place that looks like trash. Now, if you go back and they're making investments, oh, you guys are upgrading, you got new lights, the seats are new. Okay, I'll, you will continue to support that brand. And secretly, what you don't know is clients won't have a problem with the increase in price. If you go up 10%, 25% a year, but you're coming back with something new, most clients will be perfectly fine with that price hike if they can see where that money is going. A lot of you just want more money because you think you're worth it and you haven't invested in you. The number five person to avoid is Mr. Spray and Pray. He doesn't understand the importance of the technical side of this industry. He thinks it's all on the camera and he'll go in and take 50,000 pictures or shoot 50,000 clips in hope that he gets something that's great. As amateurs, we all be like this. We all start off like this, but as a professional coming into the industry, you have to know that you have to get out of that. There's no preparation for this guy. He's just showing up to a gig, shooting, and we're gonna see what we got. Hopefully we got something good. Stay away from this guy. He's not the guy you want to be around. Basketball players back in the day would show up and pick a team and just hoop and just do whatever. As a professional, they practice, they run plays, they're organized, they have game plans. As a professional in your industry, you should be doing the same thing. If you're working with somebody that's doing the spray and pray, stay away. Say it with me. If you're working with somebody that's doing spray and pray, stay away. 
Real easy. Last but not least is Mr. Artsy Guy. Mr. Artsy Guy is so worried about what people think about him and him having deep meaning in everything that he does that he does not look at the business side of the industry. He thinks that he's going to take great images and one day he'll get lucky and sell one for a million dollars and he will be rich and he won't have to feed himself grapes or wear shoes. He's the type of guy you want to avoid. There's no planning, there's no future, there's no technical sense, there is no understanding of what it takes to build a business that will create success. He's hoping and wishing that somebody discover him because his mama and them think that his pictures are so dope and he don't understand that they think the picture is dope because it came from him. He has no type of worry or understanding or desire to learn the business side because everything is all about the feeling and how it feels and how it looks and all of this crap. Meanwhile, you could be somewhere making great money if you understood how to market your content. So stay away from the artsy guy because he care more about what people think than what the reality of his situation is. When the truth is, if people really like it, they're willing to pay for it, period. You can determine how good you are based off how much you can get for your skills and services. If someone's willing to pay you to do it, you're getting pretty good. My first time shooting for a paid gig wasn't me approaching someone. It was somebody saying, hey, bro, can you shoot my wedding? I was like, I never shot a wedding. Hey, man, I'll pay you. Just shoot our wedding because your, your images are dope. That was my first time with a paid customer. That's how it worked. So stay away from a guy who's creating something just to get fans and just to win people over and be this great, super artistic genius because I guarantee you he hasn't touched a business book. He don't care to touch a business book. And he think he's too special and his work is too good to ever have to go the route of worrying about the business side. It's the same thing that happened to a lot of artists, rappers and musicians. They think that their voice and their ability to rap is so good. We'll let you handle the money and figure it out and all of this. I just want to show up and perform and all of those guys get gypped. All of them get robbed. There's some fat guy at home publishing in their royalties for the next 50 years. And that artist is usually singing on a cruise ship somewhere that can, they can barely stand up because they're old and are trying to pay bills. So don't deal with the artsy guy. This is a creative industry. Art is beautiful. It helps, but it cannot be the driving force behind your passions, your missions, and your abilities in this industry. Stay away from that guy. If you have questions about this, let's post them in the comments. Let's talk. If you are a gold or a silver member, please keep in mind, you get a little bit extra content. You get a little bit extra content as a member. Bronze members, you get some love too. I'm not leaving y'all out. However, if you are a member of the YouTube channel, look out for that extra free content. If you're not, hit the join now button. Hey, join us. We're doing more live chats. Gold members get to submit their demo reels and their websites, and we get to break those down and go over them. All right, guys. Remember, if you like this video, give it that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video.